Just a friendly reminder that the opinions expressed on this show are not worth a Canadian penny, so disregard anything you hear that might get anyone in trouble. And despite some of the great ideas you may hear, don't try them at home. Go to friend's house instead. It's time to get a gun. That's what I've been thinking. Well, I could afford one. And if I did just a little less drinking, time to put something between me and the sun. Fire Radio, episode 343 for February 27th, 2020. I'm one of your hosts, Adriel. I'm another one, Trevor. And I'm the last one, Kelly. Oh, there we go. Nice. See, we did that much better this weekend. Wow. The week, whatever. We just need a couple, like, to practice a couple times, and then we got to we gotta find this time. <laughs> We've only like done it 343 times. Are you sure it's 343? Because somebody said that we were episode 344 on the Facebook page yeah, going me. live. Yeah. Yeah, I went, I, you're welcome. I went back and fixed it. Oh, you fixed it? Oh, good. Of course it did. Yeah, it's called. I hit the any button. <laughs> it's called. I got your back. Oh, that's what. Yeah, I got your back by immediately throwing you under the bus on the show the first chance <laughs> I got. That's that's how that works, Kelly. We're, come on, we're a supportive community here. Yeah, mm. we're supportive. That's why I'm holding the timer tonight, <laughs> Kelly, so I can tell the listeners at the end of the show how many times you said as well. As well as what? <laughs> and stuff. I should do the stuff Stuff and for things. You. Stuff and, and things. things. I don't remember what you used to say, but I brought out, the, I brought out the, the counter, and then it went away, and then it was replaced with as well. So let's see if as this well. fixes your as well speech impediment. <laughs> I'm going to fix it as well. <laughs> <laughs> and stuff. Okay. Uh, awesome. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, moving on as well. Uh, what, we didn't, what we did with guns this week is brought to you by the Calgary Shooting Center, Canada's premier firearms retailer. Hold on. See, that's huh? him having my back. Who, me or Trevor? Yes. No, you having my back. Just trying to keep this show moving. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, right now, the Calgary Shooting Center has Timmy triggers for the 1022. So if you want to really. Get your 1022 all pimped out. Uh, they feature a 2.75. I need a new trigger now. This one is red. It's red. It, it's multicolored. Well, you can pick. Well, it's the only thing different is it's red. Well, Cerakote yours at the shop <laughs> for a hundred bucks. <laughs> mm, he might, you know, if he's doing a batch of red for somebody, he might throw it in for a little less. But just give it a couple sprays. Yes. Yeah. Give it that distressed, distressed look. look. Yeah. Yeah, oh, Kelly's oh, wearing that look right now. Hey. Look, <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't even have to circle me. Kelly's new look, the distressed look. <laughs> Kelly's new look, the pissed look. Okay, every Thursday at seven, it's coming right up. Uh, what else is on this Timmy trigger? Uh, it comes it's... with an extended mag release. One of the yep. doohickeys underneath there. Uh, I got a couple colors for the housing and trigger available. So they've got like silver and black. And I think there was a red in there as well. So different combos of housing and trigger shoe and colors and whatnot. And stuff. As well. And stuff <laughs> as well. Yeah. Uh, it's a really nice trigger. It is. You had one of these in one of yours, right? I have one in mine. Yeah. Mm, mm. It's a very light trigger too. Yes. They are very pricey. This is. One of the pricier yeah. triggers for the 1022, but, but very nice. But it's very nice. It really is. Mm-hmm. 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 Well, okay. why don't we uh, why don't we get into that uh, what we did in guns thing? Trevor, you want to start us off? Sure. Um, I'm actually going to practice score right now to look at my overall combined times again. That's all, so, the only one that matters. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> well, in steel, you're right. It is definitely the only one that matters, but. Uh, I went to Fredericton with uh, with the guys, stayed at Filthies again, and we w- we shot two steel challenges back to back on Saturday at Larry Shriver's range in Thomaston Corner. Mm-hmm. And in the morning, I, I don't, you know, yes, I'm going to brag. I don't care. I'm so proud. Don't care. In the morning, my total time with my CZ Shadow Two, I never pulled this. Never pulled the trigger on this pistol it was the first time i lit off a live round with this pistol and um i 
I won production with a total time of 49.3 seconds. And um, Ben was there with a trick belt 1022. And normally you can't beat a rifle shooter in a steel match, but yeah. it turns out that I can. So to be uh, fair, you've been shooting the red back a lot and the red back and the shadow are going to be sim similar grip angle, yeah. similar weight, similar lots of stuff. You're so wrong. You might as well just shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's like you're drunk. So um, the red back beaver tail and throat of the grip is not um, as pronounced as the shadow. But what it is, Adriel, is just simply um, on steel. I, I, uh, I'm better with an iron sight on steel than I am with a red dot. Doesn't make sense. Yeah. But here we are now. My the second match, I shot the CZ first. Did really really well. A time of forty nine something, um, probably faster than with my nineteen eleven a couple of weeks back. But for the second go around with my red back, yeah. I was uh, first production optics, but fourth overall with a time of sixty three twenty two. Whoa! I can't hit steel with a red dot, man. That's so interesting. You probably mm -hmm. just, you, you've probably had like, how many thousands of rounds do you have on an iron sight pistol versus a red dot? Uh, yeah. 20 times more. Oh, I mean, uh, yeah. Where, like, where, I mean, do you, where do you see the time lost? Was it in acquiring the sights as you're pulling nope. up to target? Is it in. No, nope, waiting for the red dot to stop moving so I can shoot at the plate. Uh, well, just don't stop. Yeah. Wait, don't stop for it. Don't you're wait for it to stop. Exactly. Just hammer that trigger. And that's what I did the next day in Halifax on paper. And man, uh, I did okay. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. So the two matches on Saturday, uh, first match, I finished first in production, first overall. Second match, I finished second in production in production optics and like fourth or fifth overall. So Larry, congratulations. Larry beat me in carry optics in match number two, but I beat Larry in production in the morning. So Larry, it evens out. yes, it's the, the, uh, karma in the universe is all good and stuff. And, um, <laughs> the next day I took my, um, my red back production optics and brought it to the AMA range in Dartmouth. Uh, and it was an Ipsic level two match. The videos are on Instagram and I finished first in production optics, um, just barely 3% ahead of Nathan, who, uh, and I said, Nathan, I don't know if you listen or not, but funny, man. I sent him a congratulations after the match. I was like, hey, man, you shot a hell of a match. He's like, that's right. And I almost beat you with a Glock. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, but if you would have beat me, you would have beat a man who is 10 years older than you. So you could then brag, I beat a 45-year-old with a Glock. I'm a rock star, but. Anyway, he is, uh, he's getting too good. So he is definitely going to be uh, leading the production optics pack in Nova Scotia in no time. He's already right up there. So, um, and Derek Merriweather, I put a note on Facebook. I said, anybody want me to bring anything to them when I go to Nova Scotia? And Derek said, yeah, please bring your B game. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. I did not. I'm still bring waiting Derek for my pony, by the way. I ate him. <laughs> Pony meat is delicious meat. So, um, yeah. And then along the way, I picked up some refinishing work to bring home. Somebody brought me most of a shotgun at the range oh. while I was there. Yeah, an old okay. buddy of mine from archery. And then uh, Captain Andy sent me home with his muzzle loader barrel. We're going to hot blue it. So it, it's, it looks amazing right now, but it's cold blue. So it's not going to last forever. That's the one he made, right? Yeah, yeah, and we saw it on the show. So we're going to yeah. blue that barrel. Um, nice. Actually, we're going to rust blue it. <laughs> and that should be a real nice look on a muzzle loader. And if he doesn't like it, then we'll uh, hot blue it. But yeah. we're going to start off by rust blowing it, and I'm sure he's going to love it. So, um, Oh, and then I installed on my Shadow 2 the new uh, wide safety. Yeah, looks good. And there's even, <laughs> man, you know, I don't know. I don't look closely enough sometimes. There's an even wider safety than this on the same website. So, and these are these are OEM parts, so it does not bump me out of production. But it just gives my thumb a a, a place to to rest Rocking on this side. Stuff. It's pretty yeah. big. Yeah, it's it's pretty just about. I'd say Kelly, identical to my nope. The red back one is just yeah, 
the Redback one is a little bit wider, and I could have bought the same size for the CZ, but I didn't, I didn't mm. pay close enough attention. So who knows? I might order the wider one and uh, and sell this one. But really, it's, it works. Whatever. I got my thumb on it. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, it's cool. So, um, but I, I did that. Uh, I can't remember if I did that before or after the match. I don't know. So yeah, it looks nice. Yeah. Um, oh, and then um, uh, Tim Thomas as selling me these brass grips to try on my 1911. I had, uh, I got yeah. them from him before. And then I was like, ah, I'm not sure. And then I, I brought them back and then, uh, I decided to try them again. So now they're on my damn Wesson and, um, they're a little wider than my VZ grips, which I think may be why I'm not convinced. It's going to pack that weight in there. How heavy are they? They're, they're solid brass. Yeah. How heavy are they? Um, Ah, geez, Kelly, I don't know. I actually did put them on the scale, and I didn't write the numbers down, but it, it's 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 very significant. significant. Yeah. yeah, it's like up to my red back weight now. So, <laughs> and um, when we had um, Adam from Atlas Gunworks on, he was talking about the nine millimeter nineteen elevens. If you want to weigh them down, you got to put the weight at the bottom, put the weight on the grip. So that should help keep the gun super flat and return to zero. Um. What else did I do? Oh, this arrived. Yeah. I'm sitting with this on my lap the entire time and uh, almost forgot. Ta-da! What is that? That is a Soviet Russian SKS. With un authenticity papers. Oh, yes. It did come with a certificate of <laughs> authenticity, <laughs> Kelly. And I, I think it would be appropriate if I read it. I think you should. Certificate of Authenticity. Let's be known to all free men that this <laughs> SKS rifle bearing the serial number 4464 has been hand-selected for Trevor Furlot Esquire. This rare and unique specimen has was plucked like a kernel of corn from a steaming pile of crap. <laughs> the owner has bestowed all the pleasures and benefits that comes with owning such a historic and finely crafted piece of armament. Hmm. Yes. The pride. Thank you, Jeff. The pride. Pride. It's, yep. Now. It's, yes. It's uh, it's awesome. Uh, I'm thinking this is actually a blued finish, like a satin blued, and not a um, a barbecue paint. The markings are all on the metal are all like super crisp, and they're painted in white and stuff. All matching numbers. Unfortunately, with the exception of the magazine, but the magazine is, you know, quote unquote, properly pinned. The pin is attached to the bottom of the follower. Mm -hmm. So from the outside, there's no big weld or no, you know what I mean? You can't tell that it's been molested from the outside. That's actually important to me. So that at a glance, the rifle doesn't look like it's been uh, mauled. The uh, wood grain is fantastic. Yeah, it yeah. does look nice. I haven't cleaned it up yet. I'm going to rub it down with a rag and ballastol. I would even actually consider refinishing the stock just to, uh, Denis did one for me and we were always going to. Looks okay. That one. Huh? Yeah. The finish on it looks like not that uh, bad. No, no, not bad at all. Not bad at all. But the rest of the rifle is so good that it, it warrants refinishing the wood. Um, in you my opinion. You just get one of those, uh, uh, if you say plastic. Tapco, I'm going to stab you with the say. bayonet. <laughs> <laughs> you knew where I was going, so yeah, you know, my yeah. mission accomplished. That's right. Yeah. So, because Denis did redo the stock on my um, second SKS, it is barbecue painted. So I was just telling Joey today, like I'd like to completely disassemble it and polish it to at least a 400 and hot blue it. And why? Just because well. I put pictures all over the internet and watch those SKS people's minds explode. <gasps> you destroyed the collector value. You putts. There is no collector value. Not right SKS. now. But there right may be. Uh, you know what SKSs go for in the US? I do. I do. There's a Yugo sitting on the on the rack at uh, the gun dealer in really? McAdam. How much? Yeah. Uh, like eight. Ah, nah, nah. I've never seen one less. I've, I've been in the game. Yeah, I have. I just 
they're all, they've always cost more than the other ones, and I've just yep. never been interested. And, well, they're a different animal. They're 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 beefier. They're more yeah. robust. Got and this is the one launcher, launcher. Yeah, mm-hmm. but not all Yugos have that. Hmm. So, uh, and then today was a snow day, and tomorrow might be too. The way we're going, we're talking like uh, forty centimeters. The wind is blowing so hard; it's rattling my metals. I told that to Andy a while ago, and he he giggled. But that's, uh, <laughs> that's what's happening. The walls are shaking, and my metals are rattling. So it is what it is. That's how I know the wind is blowing or the trains passing by. My metals rattle. How do you know? That's right. I don't have a train <laughs> by my house, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> so yeah, that's trains all I are did. Still running in your part of the country? Uh, not right now. No, apparently uh, a certain really? group of domestic terrorists has them blocked. Sweet. They were running at Andy's on the weekend, though. We were sitting in the hot tub smoking the cigars, and the train went by. So that's oh, unusual. That's nice. Yeah. He's he's in Halifax, though. No, he's not. No, oh, okay, never mind. I thought he was in Halifax, Dartmouth. Mm. Nope. All right. Okay. Cool. Kelly, you want to go up next? Sure. Okay. So I went to a dinner. It was a gun dinner. Well, it wasn't technically a gun dinner, but it was a dinner. I won't mention names. But anyways, I went to it because I paid a lot of money for tickets. And Kelly Squared went. So Kelly was my date. We went and sat with uh, Marcy and Ryan from SFRC. And we had a really, really good time. Was this a dinner I, at Chippendales? Or, yes. Uh, mm, okay. With guns. But I didn't win anything. So mm. it was a, it was actually a Ducks Unlimited dinner. I know. Uh, you what? Yeah, I know. I went to it. Hey, I spent $200 to go. I was going to go and you're eat not, some You're food. not making your case here. You're <laughs> not <laughs> really improving your situation so, at all. I went. Why? Because. Because she paid for them. Of course she's going to go. Eggs. Did you throw duck eggs? <laughs> but I just wanted them. to look. I just want to let you know that uh, we got asked to stand up and talk about the CCFR and that, and we got a standing ovation, by the way. Oh, very interesting. Interesting, eh? So, uh, the the guy that organizes it is actually somebody I work with, a really, really nice guy. And as I said, I spent $200 to go previous to this whole thing. Um, There's lots of guns there available, and as I said, I sat with some people. Um, It was fun. Uh, there was a, a, lots of drinking to be had. I won absolutely nothing, so I'm a loser. Uh, just want everybody to know that as well. Um, but there was it was it was fun. You there was won lots of drinking, the friendship and camaraderie, right? Of, of getting blitzed. Yes, but it was in the middle of. You just called it a miscongeniality. You just did that. You won miscongeniality <laughs> award, Kelly. Way to go. Well, I it was weird because there was a lot of drinking to be had and and yeah there was a and you spent two hundred dollars do you have anything else you want to say for the fourth time no and she had duck eggs there was there was duck (laughs) eggs served it was catered it was really good had lots of food i had no never mind anyways it was fun uh what else uh smith and weston victory still waiting for it ontario um uh, yeah i was supposed to do you, shooting. how long how long has it been um week and nine days hmm. yeah nine days so still waiting for it i haven't heard a word i'm not they're saying about two weeks i think uh what else I supposed to go shooting on Sunday. Didn't actually happen. One reason is because we were late the night before at the the dinner. But the other reason is because uh, Kelly, uh, she her battery is dead on her car, so she couldn't come in. So we got canceled. We, we actually deferred it. So instead of actually going shooting, I could have gone. But I didn't. I actually made this stuff. This is our traditional um, apple pie moonshine for the charity shoot. And traditional charity shoot beverage. It is. So I made it this year. So it wasn't in one liter. It's in half liter. So there's, we've got enough for everybody, I think. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Everyone who comes to the charity shoot gets liquor. (laughs) No. (laughs) No, we got, we got enough for everybody who generally comes to the after party. So maybe, I don't know. I like the little card on there too. It's, it's a very, huge card. I just made it a little smaller. A lot smaller. of people are like, wanting to get invited to the after party. <laughs> you like this? Uh, apple pie moonshine. I'm totally out of moonshine now, but I added us. Uh, I, I added enough moonshine, and then I actually added enough um, uh, vodka, a little extra, just to kick it up a notch. So you added was, vodka. 
I, I no, there's vodka in this. There's a lot of vodka in this. So vodka and apple and moonshine. And I'm out of moonshine, so I'm gonna have to go and see my supplier. But it's really, really good stuff. If anybody has not had it, they should come to the charity shoot because it'll be available. Just saying. Uh, and then I also spent- just saying, if you get alcohol poisoning it's on you, <laughs> it's your own fault. It is true. Right. Uh, my my suggestion is that we actually put a disclaimer on it saying, please drink responsibly. Um, I guess. I don't know. That's that's about it. I don't know. Do you still have some in your fridge, by the way? I think it's finally all gone. Oh, okay. That's sad. Uh, you'll have some in, in a bit. Four months. Yeah, there's a lot of sugar in it, so I'm not really keen on it anymore. There is a lot of sugar in it. Yeah, there's... so I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Just saying. It tastes exactly sure. like apple pie. It's all about that healthy life. I know. That's right. <sighs> Scotch and cigars. Scotch and cigars. But, but no sugar. <laughs> <laughs> um, I spent the rest of the week uh, doing stuff for Maple Seed, so I uh, was able to get out all the stuff for... Uh, our shoot boxes, so shoot boxes, was able to send that all out to everybody in BC, Alberta, New Brunswick, etc. So, and Saskatchewan. So we're going to be able to have events now. Yay! It's awesome. Yay! Adriel is going to be inundated with boxes this next week, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've been a busy boy online. My credit card's very hot, and Kelly's been <laughs> sending me stuff too. <laughs> So, but yeah. Kelly stuff doesn't come with the corona. No, yeah, yeah, it comes with like something. I don't know. I'm immune now. Yeah, you probably are. But that's all I've done. So, what about you, Adriel? Uh let's see. I, on Saturday or Sunday, I can't remember which day. One of those days, I went shooting uh, mostly 22s. Took the boy out, went and did some maple seed style stuff with a mat on the ground, all that kind of thing. Uh, I shot the 764 takedown, A22, and a couple of other 22s. Uh, A22 trigger is really interesting. Like that is a very odd trigger on it. It's got the the shoe style uh, trigger that a lot of the savages have, but like yep. the reset on it is um, deceptive, and you can get trigger freeze uh, just rapid firing mm. with it if you don't let it all the way out. Uh, not just the trigger all the way up, but that shoe as well, which is kind of interesting. Um, but that gun, just by itself, like that long cycle that it's got, very smooth to shoot, nice and accurate too. Uh, Savage 64, no. <laughs> uh, no to the accuracy, uh, no to the reliability. Um, but it was cheap. And so it was very cheap. So I, I, I um, uh, yeah, I went out and shot those guys, got some video footage taken. Uh, and then I got home and I don't know if it was like, if it was at that same weekend, uh, buddy of mine got the, like, re- just read the SFRC sale email before I did. And he's like, mm-hmm. Oh, look at this M57 Toker Evs, uh, uh, from SFRC for 189. And these are used ones, but I don't know how, how used could they be? But are they Russian? Uh, no, they're Yugoslavian. Spring loaded. What's that? This is spring loaded. This SKS has all the good stuff. Oh, what's the year on it? Fifty. Yeah, fifty. Yeah, and it's not completely covered in cosmoline like I thought huh. it would be. Like I'm taking it apart so I can clean it. No, man, it's all been degreased already. Very yeah. nice. Might want to check inside the firing pin channel on the bolt because a lot of times that's still got grease in it. So it's, it yeah. Yeah, but it's uh... you don't hear any like. No, uh, and, the, and it, the, or... the firing pin retaining pin is a little bit different than some of the other ones I've seen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this could be unfired, man. This is in really, really good shape. I, 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 we were talking just before the show, I think. like They got that designed and tooled up, and then the AK-47 came out, and I bet you they had so many factories ready for that, they just started cranking them out. That's the bottom of the bolt. Uh, sorry, Pull it back just, just a little you. bit. How's that? Yeah. See the markings clearly? Yeah. yeah. CIP. That's the that bolt kind of face. Mm. Looks like it's been test fired and that's it. Yeah. Crazy. Sorry. Carry on. I'm just tearing my SKS apart. Well, I'm going to be tearing apart some surplus stuff here shortly too. Uh, yeah. So uh, I ordered a couple of those M57s. I, I looked around. So like Really? The, why? Why what? It's a really good price. Them? Why did I order them? Yeah. I don't have any... 
uh, old pistols. All my pistols are like our new competition pistols. So I wanted something that had some age to it and was kind of old and neat. So nice. Denny had one that I bought from him. It was Russian, mm-hmm. all matching numbers, magazine yeah. that was matching, repop holster. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed it. Um, but uh, yeah, it's corrosive ammo and a pistol, you know. Yeah, so it should be super easy to clean. Yeah, you're not wrong. I know. Yeah. Uh, so you had a Russian. So uh, yeah. between the different tokes, there, there's a couple of different uh, uh, differences between them. The M57s are a nine-round magazine and a little bit longer of a grip. It's almost like they're the P10F of, uh, of tote grips. <laughs> so they've, they've, they've got meat to grab onto is what I think. Because I had a... I had both a, a 213, which is a 9 millimeter version that Canada Ammo sold for 100 bucks a pop way back in the day. I think I got two of those. Uh, and as well, I had a Chinese, oh, what's their toe grip? I can't remember what it is. I don't know. Um, they were like 99 bucks for the longest while. Yep. Yeah. And my complaint with the Chinese one and with the 213 was uh, no place for my pinky. Uh, the grips <laughs> suck. The sights suck. And uh, so I didn't really like them. But I'm hoping this M57 with that taller grip uh, is going to give more meat to grab onto, and I'll just deal with the rest. Uh, yeah, so F- SFRC had those on sale, so I, I got a couple of those. They were a good price. Yeah, 189 And then you, and you said, look what I got. And I said, SFRC, right? <laughs> <laughs> you got the email too, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, and then I was like, okay, well, I got to get some ammo for this thing. And I looked at it around a couple places and I was comparing like sh- with shipping costs because shipping on a creative ammo is expensive. Um, Tradex had s- the lowest price and free shipping on it. So I got a 1200, 1200 rounds, I think 1260, something like that, whatever creative it is, uh, from Tradex. And they also had the spare mags for the M57s as well. So I got a couple nice. from there. Yeah. And that should be here tomorrow. Yeah, something like that tomorrow. Uh, the uh, the transfer was a day. I ordered it on Sunday. And tran- I got the email on, uh, on Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, something like that. A day, anyways. Half yeah. a day. Half a day. Half a business day. Uh, <laughs> and then I so the, uh, then I got home and I pu- I published the video on that Savage sixty four takedown. I'm like, oh, well, I mean, That's it sucks, but at least it, at least it's the cheapest takedown twenty two. And someone was like, well, no, it's not. The JW twenty is, and it's like, oh yeah, yeah, I guess it you is. You bought a JW twenty, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I bought a JW twenty. They're on sale at Cabell's for one seventy. So I was like, oh, yeah. why yeah. not? <laughs> uh, I had a, a Browning SA twenty two, SA twenty two or SA twenty, SA twenty two, I think. Uh, literally, it's so old that it's like it's the Browning Semi Auto Twenty Two. That's the that's the model name, uh, and and that's what the, what this is a copy of, right? It's so old that the patent is long expired. Uh, super interesting guns. Uh, the, the things I liked about the the Browning was uh, the receiver is tiny. Uh, the uh, the underside uh, charging handle is kind of kind of a neat idea, uh, and it's a takedown model, so so that's kind yeah. of interesting as well. Uh, Trevor, you said your SKS wasn't covered in oil. This was Correct. this was covered in oil. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I mean, um, and I, I'll 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 kind of go through why I think uh, this is the manual it came with. And if you get it's so like, pretty, it's very pretty. There's there's a there's a, a guy with a suit and white gloves, and he's like carefully putting ammo into the gun. So I think what's happened here is that this is a mid '90s production. That's that's what I would guess, mid '90s. Uh, production gun right. that they were going to sell to the U.S., but oh, got got banned, and right. so they sprayed a bunch of engine fogging oil or whatever kind of preserving oil they did into a bag and stuck this in a warehouse for 30 years. And then uh, North Silver, whoever imported them, would have been like, "Hey, how about <laughs> what's that over there?" Pretty <laughs> well, much, these, yeah. These rifles from the 90s. Um, to, uh, listen to this accuracy. When the, when the range is 50 meters, the dispersion diameter of impact points for four shots is no more than 70 millimeters. That's about three inches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's their standard of accuracy. It's no more than three inches at 50. But, uh, oh, wow. the, the, a couple of other things that kind of suggest <laughs> this is made for, for American and not for us. Uh, threaded muzzle. So not really any sense in doing that for Canada. When I, when I first took it off, I'm like, oh, it's got a 
It's got a detent in there. I can I can hear the clicks. It, there, there is no detent on this thing. It's just really bad threading oh. on it. <laughs> just horrible threading. Uh, I think I'm, I'm probably going to have to do a little bit of fine tuning to this thing to uh, to get it to run really nicely, just because it's it's very roughly machined and uh, and the QC on it is uh, is not fantastic. The mm. uh, the sights on it are similar to like the the 1022 where they, they've got that sliding mask thing that goes on and then they've got a, a gold dot at the end which i hate but whatever uh loads in through the bottom there so you, you pull this uh it's a pain in the caboose depending on what kind of shooting you're doing yeah it, it it's a be. pain yeah, yeah you wouldn't want to do this uh maple seating from prone because no. you had you gotta tip it down to to get the the rounds in there uh, it's a pain. yeah yeah i think so um, I saw, uh, one review online. So there's, there's no wiggle on this thing right now. And when I was handling out mm -hmm. at Cabela's, I'm like, man, there's a, there's a ton of wiggle in this. What's going on with this? It was like, I don't know. They're all like that. Uh, and I, I tried tightening the, the barrel nut and I watched a couple of videos and the, the guys had, uh, they were loosening the barrel nut and then taking it apart. And then when they put it back together, they tightened the barrel nut. That is the wrong way to do this thing. Cause if you do that. It'll, you'll never get it tight. You got to get it tight uh, when it's off the gun. So uh, you got to pull it off and then tighten it up tight. and then lock it down. And that's the only way to get these things uh, properly tight. So hmm. was... you gonna go fix the one at Cabela's? No, that's their problem. <laughs> that's not my job. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm going to smooth out a couple of the internal components. Really interesting action. Like uh, uh, one thing that I noticed with the Ruger, the Ruger PCC did this really well. They captured like all the recoil mechanism, the whole thing, like within a very small receiver. That's what this thing does as well. Um, I think it's just a, it's just a really cool design. Uh, bottom eject, back feed. Yeah. It's like, it's magic, space magic. I don't know if it'll run or not. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. <laughs> Uh, some people were saying when you take them apart, make sure you don't uh, you don't torque on on the wood because where the wood attaches to the metal is very small, and you can crack the wood. I'm trying to think of anything else, I think that's enough. That's enough talking about a $170 Chinese 22. Uh, and I think that's it for me. So next week I'm going to be getting like a couple of toke revs, a bunch of ammo, a bunch of maple seed stuff. Yeah, my my. Mailman's gonna be bringing me stuff like heavy, heavy stuff. <laughs> heavy. Yeah. Yes. Every there's, day. Every day. Every, yeah. There's stickers on those boxes, by the way. Say heavy. Oh, okay. They're, they're heavy. Not, they're not like other stickers, like for records no. only. Or no, I like was that. nice no. to you. I did not put anything on there that would. <laughs> we are always nice to each other. Adriel's the only one that does that on this show. That the only one who knows how to have fun. Yes. Well, <laughs> no, exactly. that's not true. The first bag of dicks I got came from Stephen Casey. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And I kept it to myself for a year because I wouldn't let the devil have the satisfaction. They arrived. I must have told the story before. You bag did. of dicks arrived at like an after party, after a shoot, after a charity event. I don't know. There was the house was full of gunnies, and there was a package in the mailbox. And I opened up the bag of dicks, and I was like. <gasps> One of these bastards planned this so it would arrive <laughs> while they were here. And I'm not going to give anyone the satisfaction. So I just closed it up and then shut my mouth about it. And I'm telling the story at Captain Andy's a year later. And you should have seen Stephen's face. <gasps> you did get them. <laughs> Andy, Andy, he got the dicks. He got the dicks. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Who ate them? Uh, my buddy's wife. <laughs> Uh, I think Bolivar fell in love with her that night because she was really making a big deal about eating these things. Mm. Excellent. Okay, uh, that's it for me. What do we get on to upcoming events? Uh, the first one is TACOM Canada 2020. Uh, this will be September 11th to 13th. The Canadian Pro Gun Podcasters Network will be in attendance, including Slamfire Radio. Uh, your favorite podcasters will be on hand throughout the show. So make sure you stop by the booth to uh, meet your favorites and pick up some swag. If you head on over to TACOMCanada.com and use early bird 15 off, you will get a discount. Or you use the link that we provide and we will get a little bit of money. We do? 
Oh. Yeah, remember we covered this last week. Hello. Mm. I don't remember mm. the money part. I remember the using the link part. And I put the link in the show notes last uh, last week too. You did. You did a great job with mm-hmm. that. Thank mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. And I shared it again on our Facebook page as well oh, as the other social media. Better. Yeah. 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 Uh, so go over there and click mm-hmm. that link. It's only until March 31st, though. So you have to use the early bird 15% off prior to Too sweet. Too sweet. You bet. Yeah. Nice the, French, uh, by the way. Huh? French? Nice French. Oh, yeah. yes. Too That's sweet. Good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Very quick, I think, is what that means, right? I don't know. Yep. Yeah. The 10th Annual Podcast <laughs> Network Charity Shoot will be Saturday, July 4th at the Restigouche Gun Club. Registration and payment will soon be through practice score. It'll be 25 bucks, and we'll be doing a bunch of shooting. The charity of choice is the Rod Harkwell Memorial Fund. Uh, this fund is for the benefit of sick and injured children in the Rest Goosh area. Uh, Kelly, did you want to do this uh, EOSC CCFR Ladies Range Day event? Okay, sure. So right now it's just to save the date because we don't have the... Um ability to sign up for it yet but i'll talk about it so save the date back by popular demand it's the eosc ccfr ladies day range event it's going to be on saturday july 25th and this time we're partnered with vortex canada and we're going to have a fun time at the range um it's a it's a fundraiser this year and it's going to be for women's health and all the proceeds are uh, will be going to breast cancer action ottawa so it's awesome. So put it on your calendars. Tell um, women in the Kingston, Belleville, Brockville, and Ottawa area that they should come out to it. And we're going to have a fantastic time. So thank you. Awesome. Yep. Uh, let's see here. Intro to PRS shooting. A one-day class at the East Elgin Sportsman Association. That'll be March 7th. It'll be 80 bucks. Uh, that'll be Ken and Ryan, who are on our main topic as well. And they'll talk a little bit more about that during our main topic. Uh, 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 uh. If you're interested, please sign up through Practice Score or through the Facebook page. Uh, anything? Any, any other events? Did I miss any? No? No? Nope. Sounds good. Uh, oh, I just, yes. Yeah? DC Armory is putting on a basic reloading course this coming Sunday that will be February the oh March 1st this coming Sunday March 1st um, to sign up send an email to info at dcarmory.com or go to the Facebook page or the Instagram or contact me Joey and I are the ones teaching it so um, if you're in New Brunswick and want an introduction to reloading, we'll have a bunch of Hornady products on hand. We'll actually demonstrate how to how the process works and uh, maybe even send you home with a loaded cartridge if you have a pal, of course. So, yeah, if you want to learn the basics of reloading, sign up. Cool. Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Uh, all right, into the news. Uh, this one was just today that I saw. Uh, the IWA show in Germany is canceled due to coronavirus. Or canceled or uh, rescheduled to a date that has not been defined is the technical term that they used. Hmm. It's kind of disappointing. <clears throat> Yipsic Worlds are going on there soon, too, so I'm wondering what's going to yeah. happen. Ooh. Ooh. I bet you they'll just allow them to continue. Uh, uh, shoot your way out, boys. Shoot the coronavirus <laughs> in the face. <laughs> Well, uh, oh. alcohol is supposed to help, so I mean that should that should help with you know, IPSA competitors, right? Because of the new situation in terms with the distribution of coronavirus. Okay. Yeah, it's it's all over the place now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the next one here is a video, so I'm not going to play it for everyone. But uh, basically, during I think it was question period, some political thing, Joel yeah, Blair today. was asked uh, to define assault weapon and. Uh, he could, <laughs> he could not. It was uh, it was a rambling. Well, it could be semi-autos. It's kind of in lineage to whether they were used by the army and made for killing people, and that's uh, that's, that's an exa- assault weapon. Yeah, that's what he said. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But he couldn't. No, no, he can. <laughs> he won't. He, yeah, just like they can say how much a buyback will cost, but they won't. They're playing politics. He's choosing to be obtuse. Uh, on purpose, I mean, no, so that they, they, yes, Kelly. If they, def- if they, if they define it, they'll be held to it. Possibly, well, 
they're liberals. They do what they want. They change their mind as they go. They lie. They steal. Whatever. But they are not going to define an assault weapon, so they can just keep changing the definition as they go, right up until you know they've come for the for the the sniper rifle, which used to be your non-restricted deer rifle. Right? They're not going to define assault rifle on purpose so that they can fit lots and lots of things into meet their definition. They're Webster now. They're their own dictionary. They can do what they want. Yep. And they will. There's a call it for us from the pri- uh, prime minister today about supporting a minority government. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> cool. Mm-hmm. Why don't we get into right. new gun stuff? Uh, right. First one is Profit River is blowing out a bunch of Nikon scopes. So Profit River, I don't know what the relationship is with the Nikon, but they seem to sell a lot of Nikon stuff and put a lot of their stuff out for sale. Uh, they have some pretty smoking prices. Yeah. Uh, a lot of stuff is like half off. Uh, so if you're looking for a Monarch or an FX 1000 or one of their M or P tactical scopes, uh, Profit River has some pretty smoking deals on that Isn't stuff. Profit River. I'm not saying that these are, don't they have sometimes some of the refurbished ones as well? Yes. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Uh, yeah. refurbished, I think vortex scopes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so they get they get some interesting deals, and this is this is one of them. So, yep. yeah, if you're looking for some Nikon scopes, check those out. I believe Nikon has discontinued the rifle scopes, though. So, yeah, no, not sure what that means uh, when you actually buy one of these. Uh, okay. This next one was kind of interesting. I, I like I haven't seen this before. Uh, Trevor, have you seen this? The the Sig P320 Pro Cut Optics Ready. Yes. You have seen hmm. it. I have not like, seen not this person, though. but I know it's a thing. Hmm. They're they're in Canada now. Just got no, here, I guess. Here yeah, the uh, Sig P320 Pro Cut 9 millimeter optics ready striker fired pistol. So it looks like they pu- they put Neat. some lightning cuts in the slide. Uh, it's twelve hundred bucks. Comes with an optics mounting plate, so you can stick on a red dot if you want. And uh, that's interesting. That Are is. you? Oh, there we go. Yeah. Oh, hold on now. Holder, no. Uh, I think. Uh-huh. Yep. I haven't seen this before. Pro cut. Nope. I've not seen a pro cut. And it's like a stainless slide, like in the white with a black lower. It's very interesting. Hmm. I don't know. Hmm. Anyways, there's that. Uh, yep. There is that. Now we talked about this on the. Uh, shot show episode but uh, they're just uh, they're just coming in and pre-ordering that kind of thing solely outdoors is uh, doing a pre-order on the rem 700 pcrsb 10 and a half inch barrel non-restricted bolty from remington so uh, i guess this would be really good on some of the what short range prs matches i guess i'm guessing because i have no idea i don't shoot this i don't know man that's 10 round mag 223 with a chassis like an aluminum and a four in just like an AR the height over bore like when you switch to a chassis take my MDT for example Mm -hmm. it gives you the same ergonomics as an AR-15 in that the um, the buffer and the bolt carrier group go straight back in line with the buffer tube, which is in line with the stock. So all the forces the of energy go into it. Like on my MDTs, the bolt was always just a little bit above the buffer tube. Oh, uh, see my MDT, the bolt is in line with the buffer tube, just like hmm. it would be on an air 15. Yeah. Now this chassis is working against that principle. You've got the, the buffer tube down below mm-hmm. the bolt, which if you're going to put a gun in a chassis, in my opinion, the whole purpose of doing it is to get all of that in a straight line, like on the how, air like, platform. I don't know how you could without like making them a lot longer, though, because the bolt still has to come back and the like everything would be in the way. Your buffer tube would be in the way. Well, the, the buffer tube is attached to the back of the chassis at the end yeah. of the bolt throw. That would make it really long, though. My MDT is not really long. You got it handy? Yeah, hold on. I gotta see Stand this. By. I gotta see this. Doesn't make sense in my brain because I had one of those MBTs in the bolt, like the Ruger uh, um, Precision. The bolt telescopes into the the buffer. Yeah, 
That's right. Yeah. Which is an improvement on this. See? Yeah. Uh, oh, it just it's just really long. That's the only way that works. Yep. It's really long. It doesn't feel really long. You're two or three inches longer just because uh, the bolt, like the bolt can only go as far as the buffer tube starts. Mm -hmm. Whereas on that other gun, the bolt was going way over top the the buffer tube. Right. And I just. That is long. I would say for shooting heavy cartridges, that style that you've got there um, would let you spot your hits better than one that was uh, where the bolt was above. Yeah. Yeah. Neat. <laughs> Jesus, did an orangutan shoot this last? Why is the length of bull so long? <laughs> hmm. There we go. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so this would be my PRS rig right now. Hmm. 308, bipod up front, monopod in the back, which I would take off and just use a bag. Yeah. Good, good ish cool. scope, but yeah. I would use my vortex. Mm. Cool. Nice. All right. Uh, what was the next thing we're looking at here? Uh, oh, yeah. Mag Dump is doing, they were selling the CCI standard velocity really cheap. I bought like 2,000 rounds. Uh, they are selling it really cheap again, like seven cents a round. That's really Great. low for CCI standard velocity. Yeah. And they're doing it with 500 round bricks. So you don't have to, like, Tenda had a good price on these, but you had to buy like 5,000 of them at a time. These guys are selling at 500 a uh, uh, pack and uh, at a really good price. Pack. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Which is neat. Uh, and Range View Sports has Savage Model 64Fs for 139, which is cheap. Uh, yeah, pretty cheap. There's a reason they're that cheap, but uh, yep. they got them cheap. If you want a cheap 22. Mm, that is very cheap, yep. Yeah. Uh, and then... How much time can we say cheap? I'm just going to keep saying it. <laughs> I, like, this isn't news. This isn't new gun stuff. I just thought it was neat. I saw this on the Kui Collectors Facebook group. Uh, the idea of making these uh, these tubes for holding 22 shells for speed-loading uh, uh, tube-fed magazines. I thought it was kind of neat. They had, like, uh, shells on either side of some copper tubing and uh, a little uh, what do you call that clip? Oh, I've seen these made out of an arrow. Yeah. Somebody takes an arrow yep. shaft mm -hmm. does the same thing. They just put a keep the knock on one end drill the other end and put a a, a body pin or clip yep. through and... Yeah. yeah, I think that's what they were saying in here was they used uh, 25, 12 aluminum arrows uh, yep. And some thirty out six brass. If you want to like top it off and add a little bit of color to it, twenty five. Don't get caught up on the twelve. If you want to make an, if you want to do this, you want to make it out of an arrow. Just get any twenty five size Eastern aluminum arrow. Hmm. The twelve does not matter in this twenty five size. Perfect twenty five. And that's a fat arrow, by the way. Twenty fives are big. You don't need it. Jeez, you well, can do that. It. You need to fit a twenty two LR in there, right? Well, you could do it in a 22 or like a 22, a 23 is 9.3 millimeters. What's the so internal dimension though? Uh, well, take away the thickness of the wall. So yeah. call it like 9.1. I don't know what that means in 22 language. I okay. don't even know what the rim thickness is on a 22. Anyways, that stuff will work for sure. You could put your pinky almost inside a 25. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then finally, and this, uh, I don't have this on the list here, but one of the, uh, one of our listeners was just mentioning it. Uh, they got the WSMCR, uh, and they're one of the first people to get one like commercially. So commercially, personally, uh, and they have a quick little review under the black rifle section on CGN with some picks and, and all that kind of stuff. So cool. yeah, it looks, uh, looks neat. So this is the, uh, Wolverine and Spectre made uh, 180. Right. Looks like the, um, so the the 180 had a, I think it was a Delrin or a nylon uh, piston guide in the front. Looks like these guys are using steel or brass or some kind of metal. 
and gas plug looks a little bit different. Yeah. So if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what you're going to get uh, and uh, what these things look like, you can check that out on CGN. Interesting. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, the guy who did that review is in our comments right now. Mr. Brad. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hey, Brad. Uh, that's it for new gun stuff. Why don't we get on to the main topic? Hey, everyone, and welcome to the main topic. Tonight, we have Ryan McLean and Ken Thiessen on. They're going to be talking about PRS. Uh, so, Ryan McLean, let's do a little introduction on him. Ryan lives in northern Ontario and has been shooting and, and hunting for the past 17 years. He started shooting competitions seven years ago uh, with Ken as his partner in the ORA, ORA Precision Rifle Matches. He went uh, to his first PRS match five years ago, and he was hooked. He now shoots PRS matches all over eastern united states and canada he also does a bunch of matches match direct match directing uh specifically the meaford long range steel challenge with chris chris de roger uh the canadian sharpshooters classic with rob furlong um and some day matches at petawawa as well and finally he started uh working with Cadex Defense in July. That's why I'm wearing the Cadex Defense hat of last year, and he's doing customer service with them and sales. So fantastic. And we also have Ken Thiessen on as well. Ken is the general manager at Bullseye London, one of our favorite stores, by the way, and a Vortex Optics and also Cadex Woo-hoo. Pro staff. So again, the Cadex hat. Uh, he's been shooting competitively for the last 10 years in Precision Rifle and PRS. He's a member of the Canadian F-class uh, rifle team and has traveled all over Canada and the U.S. to compete. Uh, he feels lucky to have had many accomplishments in the various disciplines and that he's shot. And over the years, he has helped Ryan and Chris run uh, um, Meaford Long Range Steel Challenge PRS matches. And he's worked closely with Ryan running the club level matches as well in the training clinics. So both uh, Ken and Ryan, they work together on training and, fo- and it focuses on the comp- uh, competitive shooting, uh, getting new people into the sport and also building the PRS sports in Canada. So we wanted to say welcome to you guys. So Thank welcome. You. Thank you. And the so other rarely thing- <laughs> does the uh, intro take half the time of the interview. That's amazing. <laughs> I, spent the, I said, you know what? I I'm going to give you. Like, there's an intro, and then there's reading the guest resume, Kelly. Like I, you guys are I hired. I wanted a bio because <laughs> I didn't want to miss anything because both of these guys are fantastic. Like Ryan, you've been on before, right? Yeah, I have. Yep. Yeah, but Ken hasn't. So no, this is my first time. Right. Or so sorry. I wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything because they're so active in our community and they do so much and they're fantastic guys. So I said, give me a quick bio so that I can actually introduce you guys properly and that was the um, version of quick yeah <laughs> let's talk about what they're here for actually um so you guys are going to be having a clinic on the 7th which is coming up next weekend not this weekend coming up but the next one do you want to talk to us a little bit about it that's the main reason why we have you on but we also want to talk about some of the uh, matches that are going to be happening and also prs as well so the mat or sorry the clinic that's coming up, it's going to be at East Algen. Do you want to tell us exactly what it's all about? Because people don't even have to bring guns or anything, right? No, that's right. Uh, Kat, I'll let you handle that one, and then I'll talk about the end, the other two at the end of March there, if you want. Yeah, for sure. So <clears throat> with the uh, with the clinic coming up here on the 7th, um, it is very much an intro uh, to PRS-style shooting. So what we wanted to offer uh, people, and we get feedback all the time, is you know, there's new people wanting to come into the sport. There's people that don't know what they want to do. They don't know what kind of gear they need. So this clinic is very much based around the new shooter that really knows nothing and but has seen PRS, kind of knows what it's about, and they want to dive into it and they need some direction. So myself and Ryan felt that uh, there's a need uh, need in the area for for some information to be spread, and uh, that's basically what we're uh, what we're doing with this clinic. Is is it's uh, yeah, like you said, no no equipment needed. Just show up with an open mind and a notepad. And uh, we're going to try and feed you a whole bunch of information that is based on the competitive shooting side of things, <clears throat> but obviously can be used in, you know, any any shooting discipline uh, that you partake in. Um, so, yeah, we're just hoping to uh, to to get that information out there for people and, and get them to get their feet wet, get them into the 
PRS shooting sports and help them feel comfortable when they get to their, their first match. Cause it, it can be pretty overwhelming if, if it's new and you don't know what to expect. Okay. Do you, are you going to cover technical pieces as well? Like for example, rendering or anything like that, or are you just going to go into the equipment needed benefits of it? We, uh, we get into a little bit of everything. Um, and because there's so much information out there, especially when you get to some of the technical things, it can be very overwhelming for the new person. Um, okay. but we're definitely covering, definitely covering equipment, you know, optics, you know, giving certain suggestions or, and having them, you know, point them towards the right type of equipment, uh, including firearms. And we touch on, you know, obviously you've got to be aware of the wind and wind reading and, and some ballistics and things like that. They're involved in order to hit targets at distance. Um, so we try to cover, cover all of it, uh, as much as we can without melting their brains. Okay. All right. And, um, so it's, Next Saturday, how much is the cost of it? Where can people sign up for it? Uh, so uh, sign up is on practice score. Uh, you can you can nice. sign up for the uh, for the uh, uh, clinics uh, directly there. Um, <clears throat> the cost of the clinic is eighty dollars, and it's going to be the majority of the day. So we're looking at about eight thirty to three thirty. Time with that clinic usually is dependent on how much discussions in class and how fast we can move along. But usually we go till about mid afternoon. So we don't try, try not to burn your entire Saturday on you. Um, but it's definitely a full day of uh, information learning. That's okay. interesting. Uh, Ken, uh, how much of the, uh, how much of what you're going over covers uh, like how to compete in PRS, uh, how to score well, um, and actually like the competition or the match? Yeah, we try to cover the basis on on all of those items. <clears throat> Obviously, trying to get them a, a, a good idea where what to expect when they go to the first match. So we try to cover everything from the equipment, you know, the targets, the target styles, the shooting styles, the different barricades uh, that you might be uh, shooting off of, and uh, and all the things that go along with it. So we're really trying to give them a very good baseline of what to expect, um, so they have an idea of what's going on. And of course, the PRS has been coming uh, more and more popular throughout the years and there's a lot of information out there there's more videos there's more training there's more matches going on uh so there's uh lots of things there that we can uh, point the guys in the right direction mm -hmm. okay yeah that's cool i mean with ipsic there's black badge and uh and that's probably handy for a lot of people who haven't competed before but i think mm -hmm. that uh prs attracts a a different set of people that uh that want to shoot accurately and not run around with a pistol in their hands and you know black black cardboard stuff real close mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I've, I've used the term uh, with prs people kind of ask you know what what is it really like and and you know i shoot idpa and ipsic myself and i'm familiar with those disciplines but i tell them it's it's kind of like ipsic with a with a rifle um yeah. you know you're under you're under a time stressor you've got to make sure you get your points uh but you've got to be not only quick but you have to be very precise at it because of course we're talking about longer ranges here instead of you know that 7 10 20 yards yeah exactly uh, so, fantastic with that. That's the introduction with that. So, if people actually want to get into the shooting aspect, you've also recently introduced uh, some of the matches, um, more of the club level matches. Ryan, do you want to talk about those? You got some of those coming up as well? Yeah, actually, uh, we also have two um, introduction to uh, <coughs> matches, uh, introduction to PRS matches. Um, classes we're going to be running at the end of March. So okay. we're going to have a live fire, center fire, and a rim fire one on the uh, 28th and 29th at East Elgin as well. Um, you know, we're only really going up to 300 meters, but we're really focusing on the uh, fundamentals of the shooting, uh, make sure everybody has a you know good understanding of how to shoot prone directly into the positional shooting, how to attack different barricades, um, and, and really take it to the next step after class. Uh, okay. So the guys, after they've done that, they can move up into the uh, actually do some fi uh, center fire or rim fire work uh, with Ken and I. So the idea behind that, like I said, just to get them that one step for one step closer to uh, going to the first matches. So. Okay, and one of those uh, March twenty eighth and 29th. So the center fire ones on the twenty eighth, and the live the uh, rim fires on the 29th. Uh, we haven't really been advertising them as hard because uh, they're about halfway full now, and we wanted to make sure the guys that were taking or people who are taking the uh, intro the class could get a chance at getting into them as well. So we, so. Okay, so we, you're talking about rimfire and you're talking about centerfire. Now these people are pretty new to it. So what are you suggesting that they bring for the what types of rifles? 
Uh, so on the 28th, it is, um, it's uh, our center fire only because we have to change up our targets we're going to be using for each day. Okay. Uh, so center fire, literally, can, they can bring anything they want uh, as long as it has a, you know, a, so a scope that they can adjust for uh, elevation, uh, preferably a 10-round mag. Um, but, you know, if they don't, we can work around that, too. Like I said, it's an introduction to this level of shooting. Uh, and on the 29th, like it's a, a rim fire only, so we're going to be moving the targets in a little bit, or um, and, or increasing the targets slightly as well, just to make sure that we can get the the hits on steel and still, uh, you know, put the fundamentals to the the shooting that we're offering. Okay. Now you've also introduced other matches as well. I know that you work with uh, Morgan um, out at out in Petawawa and some other areas as well. Do you want to talk about some of those that are coming up? <clears throat> yeah. For sure. Yeah, uh, actually, I was just writing down all the matches I have, and I didn't realize I was getting quite so busy. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, so first uh, first matches we're going to be running in Petawawa is going to be in May on the 16th. Um, once again, all the registrations on Pet on the uh, practice score for this uh, under the Petawawa PRS club matches, I should say. Um, so these matches are one-day matches. Uh, usually shoot uh, 10 stages, 100 rounds in the day. Uh, we're we're in there by seven seven thirty, and we're out of there by three thirty in the afternoon. Um, all tore down and ready to go. So they're a great time. Um, you know, usually get uh, thirty five to forty five shooters out for them, and uh, everybody really enjoys them. It's a good uh, introduction to new shooters uh, for actual match shooting, uh, and a really good practice for the guys that are experienced shooters. Um, we try to mix up the squads as much as possible, getting the experienced guys with the new guys. So they can uh, work work along with them. Uh, we encourage you know spotting uh, and helping them out if they're missing that type of thing, helping them out with the positional. Um, it's really a, a really fun match to go to. We don't do any uh, you know major prizes or anything like that. There's usually a few draw prizes at the end of the day, but everybody's out there to have a good time and if they place for a second or a third, they get a cool trophy too. So um, so basically having one a month from you know, May, June, July, August, and September is the finale. Um, I'm hoping right now, actually in June, actually in June, we do have two days, the Saturdays a practice and Sundays a match. Same thing with September. Um, we got a practice and a match, which is the finale is the match there. Uh, the June practice, we're in the process of seeing if we can get access to do a night shoot. Oh, cool. Um, and which is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I just got to get the lights over to them to get the, the approval for it. But, um, mm -hmm. it's, it's something we can do on that range. So it's, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Awesome. So you can both are with KDEX Defense. You're both pro staff for them. Um, what are some of the new things that are coming out for KDEX or what are some of the rifles that you're recommending? I know that at uh, Meaford, KDEX is there and get, people get to actually um, shoot the rifles and, and play with them. But what are some of the what are some of the rifles and also some of the equipment that you're recommending, for example, for those matches, but also for Meaford that's coming up? Yeah, so the, the rifle that's really best suited for the PRS from KDEX is the uh, light comp series, the mm -hmm. light competition or field competition series. Uh, we came out with that a couple of years ago, uh, a little longer forend on it. It's now M-Lock as well on the forend. Uh, obviously, all your, your necessary adjustability with the length of pole, cheek rest. Uh, the other big thing is, too, it runs on a uh, R7 uh, action, which is a... Uh, has a four lug design and a 50 degree bolt throw so it's very very fast to run uh for those quick follow-up shots um it's actually it's what ken and i both run in our for our match rifles um, mm -hmm. just they're nice mine, just got mm -hmm. mine back in a nice white color <laughs> snow camo did you yeah. go with the white it's gonna get dirty <laughs> uh, i don't know if it will ah whatever anyway so they did a cool job on it um I guess also looking at this, one of the big things for competition-wise is you need to have an ARCA rail. Um, this is the ARCA rail system on the bottom right here. I don't know if it's going to show up in the pictures or not, but yeah, it's showing. Uh, the um, one thing that's different on ours is we have a, a locking system in the center, so you can actually adjust it anywhere you want oh, cool. and lock it back down. So one of the downsides to regular ARCA is under recoil, it can shift around because it only has the clamping. It doesn't have that uh, locking like you would on a Picatinny. Now you have that locking and the sliding ability with our system. Interesting. So, cool. yeah. So that's one of the big things there. The other, the other big uh, release we had for this year is our new hunting rifle system. Uh, pretty excited about that. Kind of, it's focused more towards a you know performance hunter guy that wants something more than just that uh, that seven hundred or the 
the uh, you know Tika or whatever else out there. We want to be able to make sure they have a solid setup that they can really reach out, and we're we're chambering that in some pretty heavy recoiling um, cartridges like, all the way up for guys that really want to smack a moose at a distance or you know I, I mean it's minimum for a deer these days is 338 Lapua I think any lower than that <laughs> just bounces off of them yeah 100% 100% <laughs> yeah I, I'd say that new hunting line series is you know built around the guy that is you know competitive in nature but doesn't want to drag around his 18 pound competition gun to do the hunting work he's uh, he's got something that's going to perform just as well that's in a lighter pro- profile to uh to to get out in the field with and uh put some miles on it right and it's a cadex come on it's quality right 100 percent. yeah yep. so ken why don't you uh why don't you recommend some uh rifles for people or sorry not rifles but uh optics for people who are looking for it. i know you uh you're pro staff for for vortex so mm-hmm. what's what do you need people are always asking what do you need for for magnification and, yeah, I uh, mean it's uh, it's it's one of those things. Optics is uh, is a very deep subject, and you could argue it on the internet all day long. Um, of course, I'm a little biased, and I do have my love for a lot of the Vortex brand. Um, you know, myself, I, I I love the the Razor Gen two. Um, it's it's their 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 top tier optic. It's at a higher price point that not everybody can afford to get into. But uh, that being said, um, it's it's a fabulous scope that uh, covers everything that you need to do. Um, they do have a lot of offerings and some budget-minded uh, um, aspects. Um, the most popular one coming down from that is probably your uh, your Vortex PST Gen 2. And you're generally looking around the $1,500 price point for something like that. It's in a 6 to 24 power magnification, uh, which which kind of works for everything that you need. And if you're really budget-minded or if you wanted something that's uh, that's uh, good for the rimfire rifles, they're Diamondback Tactical line as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're in that $500 mark, uh, similar uh, magnification offerings. Uh, all of these are first focal plane scopes, which is pretty well a must in the PRS discipline. Um can you shoot it with second focal plane? Yes, uh, but you're going to make things difficult on yourself. So first focal plane is uh, is, is basically what, what you're going to be looking for. And I tell people not to get too hung up on magnification. Of course, a lot of it is personal preference with that. Um, people think that you need 50, 60 power magnification scopes to shoot long range, and that absolutely is not the case. Um, you know, I've shot plenty of 1,000 yard plus shots on 10 or 15 power, and generally... In PRS, you're running those lower to medium magnifications in most stages, um, you know, that 12, 15 power. Uh, you know, you get good field of view. You're able to manage your recoil properly, stay on target. There's there's lots of reasons for the magnification selection. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, it's 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 definitely they've got lots of good product in the market. Of course, they're not the only ones. There's lots of top tier optics companies out there. Uh, not true. Not true. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, lots of options out there for 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 for, for people for sure. Um, obviously that's one of the things we cover in our, in our clinics and our classes to try and help people understand what they need. Uh, there's definitely some things that are better in the market than others. Some, some are just gimmicks. Some, some actually do the work. Um, okay. so, so it can be a little overwhelming for the new, new shooter getting out there when it comes to the optics thing, but, uh, we try to point them in the right direction. So you said there's just a couple of things that you need for sure. So what are the, a couple of things that you need for sure? Uh, if you're looking to compete, uh, PRS, I mean, you don't need to get all of the gear that's out there and you could go broke buying it all, to be honest. Yep. Um, you'd need a good gun that'll hold under MOA, um, a bipod, a rear bag and a, a good optic and, and, you know, a range bag to carry some of your ammo and your peripherals around, uh, spare parts and mags and stuff like that. You really don't need a lot to get started. Obviously, when you jump into it and you start seeing the guys at the range and you see all the extra gadgets and toys and the extra accessories, there are certain things that can help you, but there's also a lot of things that could hinder you as well, too. Um, so then it becomes a bit of the uh, the game of trying to find out what works for you. Okay. Yeah. You need some training. A little bit. You know, I, I, I tell people like everybody wants to buy, uh, everybody wants to buy the $5,000 rifle and think that's going to be the one that gives them the, the one mile shot. To be honest, and you spend $2,000 on equipment, $5,000 on training and uh, learn how to use what they get. Because to, to be honest, uh, the equipment has come 
leaps and bounds in the last years, even from, from when I started shooting. I mean, the optics are better. The accessories are better. The guns are better. Even the uh, factory loaded ammunition is better. Um, so your standard firearms and equipment are usually far more capable than the shooter behind it until they, uh, until they get some, some training and some understanding uh, under their belt to, 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 to actually see what the equipment can do. It's, it's pretty impressive with what you can do with an off the shelf firearm now these days. And, and there's a lot of offerings out there. So lots yeah. of manufacturers are, 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 have got some, you know, budget minded uh, firearms out there. So you don't have to get, go broke to, to go compete. Right. Right. So, Trevor has a question. He's raised his hand. Good job, Trevor. <laughs> Two. Um, so it doesn't bolt versus gas. Um, the impression I'm getting is it doesn't matter. What matters is the accuracy. You can go with a gas gun if it holds under MOA. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'd, I, I'd, I'd agree with that. Um, it's tough to get that type of accuracy out of a bolt gun. Uh, it's not impossible. Of There's lots, lots of guys. Yeah. Or sorry, out of a gas gun. Yeah. My yeah, you both run bolt. I know that. Yeah, and and you'll see the majority of the shooters do they run a do. bolt. Um, you'll you'll get you, you generally get very very good accuracy of the bolt gun. And uh, the other thing is what mo- most people don't realize is you have multiple recoil impulses on a gas gun. Normally, you've got you know the recoil impulse when you f- pull the trigger, and then you've got all the moving parts and the bolt carrier grip, and the mechanism going back forward. So um, recoil management is key to keep on target, and sometimes that can give you a little extra disturbance when you're trying to see downrange. Very mm-hmm. good point that I'm sure a lot of people don't consider. Next question. Um, is the caliber race going on or is there really only one and it takes people a while to get there? And if so, what is it? Um, yeah, caliber is always a hot topic. Um, obviously, the, the, the biggest one that's come to the forefront over the last few years is is the 6.5 Creedmoor. That's been the popular launch now, of reference there. Will will I grow my own man bun if I switch to it, or is one <laughs> provided? How does how does the I man think, bun thing work? I think that's work? Re- re- uh, reserved for the 6 Creedmoor guys now. I think 6.5, <laughs> you're fine now. Yeah, on, yeah. I think it, is solid now, okay? Trevor, take off your hat. You could use some extra hair. <laughs> so... So the uh, yeah the caliber the caliber race is, is just like uh, the optics discussion on the internet. Uh, yeah. You're always going to be wrong. There's always going to be an argument off. But mm-hmm. um, you know um, the six fives, uh, the various six fives have been the most popular ones. Six five Creedmoor, as I mentioned, six five forty seven. Um, you know, there's still some guys running the the two sixty uh, Remington stuff. I mean, heck, I ran a two sixty Ackley improved up to two years ago. Um, and I finally switched the six five creed more. You'll see a lot of guys running a lot of the six mills. Um, okay. and the reason the reason for the six mill is that uh, they, there's a little less recoil impulse to deal with. Um, so they're definitely you know a little easier to maintain on target. Usually a little flatter shooting. Um, but if you're getting into the ranges like Meaford, for instance, where the wind's really blowing and, and you get a, get some shots out there that are that are out past a thousand, then the six fives of the heavier bullets can 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 buck the wind and perform a little bit better out there so it is a little bit of a personal preference and you'll see a spattering of all those calibers across you know the top 10 or 20 guys on the prs it's it's between six millimeter and six fives really i would say, so, I would say the majority yeah the majority of guys are running six mils down in the states um no in, nobody's uh, even bothering with nobody's even bothering with a 30 cal of any kind anymore unless you're running tack class um you're running a 308 for tack class um yeah and that's up to a 178 grain bullet. I described tack class. What's the firearm and scope combo look like? So it is only the only thing they uh, describe for the tack class is if it's a 223 or 308, and that's up to a I believe it's a 178 grain at 2700 feet per sec is the speed limit you're set to, and then a, a 223, I believe it's up to 77 grain going so. 3, 3100 or 3000, one or the other. It sounds um, like uh, like an, an old person category, like uh, like it's a tar- classic or something like that. <laughs> yeah, for antiquated calibers and cartridges, <laughs> is it the same same target, same distances? Yeah, yeah exa- everything's exactly the same. Um, basically, what it is is it was designed for guys that are you know in military, the military, police, police or... that type of thing, so they can go yeah. use the, what they're using at work. Um, <clears throat> or jagged old bastards like me that don't believe in six five anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean like. Mark Ramp, honest. you like 308. It's good enough for him. It's good enough for me. Just bring out your 30 out six, then. Oh, jeez. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Recoil management. Hang on target. Come on now. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, the 308, I mean, 
when I started shooting, that's, that's, that's the cartridge I, I, I shot with. And, I, and I've told guys, if you're, if you're starting out, there's definitely nothing wrong with a 308. And, and I've shot 308, you know, me and Ryan both shot together for a long time. He shot 223. I shot three, 308. And if you can get really good at, at shooting a 308 and 223 at distance in some gnarly wind, um, when you make that switch to one, some, one of these six fives or six millimeter cartridges, it almost feels like yeah. you're cheating um, because they're just ballistically really? that much more efficient. But that was my next question: Is the six five really outperforming them that noticeably? And yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember the first year uh, me and Ryan both switched. We came off uh, shooting two two three and three oh eights when we were running some ORA precision rifle stuff. And the first year we both built the exact same gun, same platform, running two sixty Ackley improved, so a six six and a half millimeter variant. And I remember, you know, our first match, we really had to grasp our wind calls because we were overcorrecting. We'd normally look at that target oh, you know, right. range and go, you know what, I need x amount of wind on the gun and you'd pull the trigger and you go man i i literally needed half of that um so there was there's you soon saw that you you could cut the wind without uh without making some big adjustments and, and there's right. a little bit of a saving grace there for you so it, it is a real thing so what's the parent case on the 6.5 like if i've got a rifle chambered in 308 can i just swap the barrel you could so the okay. uh, the the uh, case head dimension is the same so it will run on any short action standard bolt face uh, uh provisions 308 243 um anything like that so what barrel length are guys running uh majority you're seeing guys like 24 inch ish give or take 24 to 27 yeah jeebus 27 somebody's compensating <laughs> gotta get that gotta get that extra 10 fps out of that thing <laughs> that's <Wow>. right <laughs> all right you may have convinced me to take my i gotta i have i have a PRS rifle. I mean, it's in a chassis. It's it's all tuned up and stuff. It's got a shillin barrel, but two things: one, it's in three hundred eight, and two, it's only twenty inches long. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't let you. De- I wouldn't let that deter you from it. Um, there's uh, lots of uh, lots no, no, of guys. Ken, Ken, I'm a gear whore, buddy. This is <laughs> time to sell, right? Time yeah, you guys sell. need to stay on after the show to sell them the latest. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And then maybe I'll take my Gen 2 PST yeah. and put that on the bolt gun mm-hmm. instead of on the gas gun. The gas gun's in 308. The bolt gun's in 308. I don't need both in 308. And I never had a 6.5. Glad you guys came on. Yeah, my wife, could... probably not so much. <laughs> we can definitely get you pointed in the right direction. I think we can make a real good setup for you. Well, first thing would be to take class. I yeah, understand but... the value of that. I'd be more than happy to leave the gun home. You have to come to Ontario. What for the learning? Yeah. That's the other thing I was going to ask you guys about. So there's, let's be honest, PRS has started to really catch on across the country, especially when you can get into it, dabble into it with some of the rimfire that's going across the country. Mm -hmm. Um, Who, besides you guys, who else is, so Ontario. Yeah. If you're in Ontario, we can get to you, but uh, you know, on, Alberta. BC is in BC, BC running that. Well, of course, wherever Ryan is, this is going to BC, be a thing. BC and out east. Do you know of anybody who's running these types of courses? Introduction to PRS across the country, or even not matches. That, not, that, not that I know of. Uh, the guys out uh, out in BC that are running some matches are the are I believe they're going to be running them again this year. Is uh, oh the engineer from uh, MDT there, Ken? Uh, Josh. Uh, Josh. Josh. Yeah. Yeah. Josh Botha. Yeah. Josh has been running some stuff out in BC there. Uh, okay. And the guys, uh, some guys in the Southern uh, Alberta have been running some stuff as well. Uh, as for clinic wise, I, I don't know of anybody else running any clinics, uh, like basic stuff like this. Uh, the call sign 66 guys run a few different things with positional shooting. Yep. Um, other than that, not that I know of that's really for PRS based type shooting. Okay. Rob Perlong's not running anything. Uh, no, not PRS wise. He's different uh, things. That was all. Yep. Yeah, it'll be different. Okay. It's all uh, in long range. Okay. Um. All right. So let's talk a little bit about some of the other matches that are happening across the country. Uh, do you want to talk about Mefer? Do you want to talk about the Rob Furlong? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. So uh, I guess we're going uh, Rob Furlong match. So it's a Canadian sharpshooter classic. Uh, it's going to be July 11th weekend out in Hannah, Alberta. So it's uh, about an, I think it's about two, 
and it's about three hours from Edmonton, about two and a half from uh, from Calgary. So it's a bit of a drive out there, uh, out past Drumheller. It's a beautiful area to shoot. Um, and once again, we'll be shooting probably around two hundred rounds. Uh, and it's a pretty neat place to shoot because you can you can actually shoot out to about four and a half thousand meters on mm. his range. And we don't go that nearly that far, but you can if you wanted to. Um, it's a lot of fun to shoot there because like it's just flat, flatter than flat, and the winds are wild. Uh, Ken came out; he can speak to that a bit too. Yeah. And... <laughs> yeah, I mean, and 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 it's it is different. To obviously, uh, uh, topographically, it's different country out there. Um, but it is a you know, Rob's got a beautiful uh, area there, and as Ryan mentioned, it's it's quite flat. You're in the middle of nowhere, literally. Um, which is a great thing. And uh, Ryan does a great job. He did a great job uh, last year setting up that match because, you know, you, you show up and you basically have an empty field and you've got to make something of it. And so mm-hmm. the target tree and the distances and the course of fire definitely were challenging. It, it wasn't an easy match by any means, um, but definitely a unique match the way uh, it was laid out and how it was uh, how it was done. So definitely one I recommend. It's definitely one I'm going to try and get to uh, this year again because it was, it was a ton of fun. It was challenging and we had some great shooters out there and it was good to see a lot of the uh, – the Western shooters um, that uh, that that are out in that area, they don't always get the chance to come come east to the to the Meaford match, um, and and you know there's there's some good talent all the way across this country that uh, that's a little bit hidden sometimes. Not everybody's maybe aware of it, but uh, definitely definitely a good match. So um, it's definitely one to check out if you're you're able to get to that one for sure. Fantastic. Yeah, so then there's also the uh, Meaford Steel Long Range Steel Challenge. Uh, I think this is this year five, Ken. Year uh, this is your, this is your five. Yeah, yeah this is your this five. Is your five. <laughs> so, <laughs> Time flies. Yeah, so this, uh, yeah. So this this uh, matches at the at the Meaford military base, uh, the training uh, base there, and it's it's on their uh, artillery pad. So it's kind of a unique situation, because shooting on it's about a two hundred yard, one hundred fifty two hundred yard long pad. And we have uh, uh, 10 stages all the way across that in, uh, on each day. So you shoot a total of 20 stages on that. And it's a it's a field style match. So there's no backdrops or for any of the targets, no backstops on any of the targets. So you got to make sure you're really on the target. Um, we we challenge the guys with the, the location there with a, with a ton of wind coming off the bay. Um, and uh, I always get a lot of great comments from the guys out of the states how challenging the facility is to shoot at. Um, it's still we we still really push for the, a lot of the new shooters that are coming out to make sure they get as many hits as possible uh, and have a great time. We try always always make sure we feed the guys really well at both the matches. Um, and uh, you know it's it's always a blast. That one I like a lot because you can really you can watch around you too, see who's shooting on either side of you, see how they're shooting different stages. Uh, we get some really really good talent coming out of the States yep. there. Uh, we had Dave Preston up last year, Ken Sanoski, a whole bunch of the guys out of the Ohio, Pennsylvania area. Um, and man, those guys can shoot. They're just machines. Mm-hmm. Uh, so last year you had Dave Preston and Ken Sanoski. You get, they did a clinic in <clears throat> um, Petawawa afterwards as well. So it, are you planning to do that as, as well again I, I this wish, year? I wish I had to i just don't have the time right now oh. uh if we if we run into a point where we do have we can squeeze them in in the fall we'll try yeah. to squeeze another one in in, in petawawa there uh but as of right now like I, I actually have uh possibly five more dates i'm waiting to hear on as well to okay. go and to, for running matches plus i like to shoot a bit too so. <laughs> <laughs> match director you know you no longer get to shoot um luckily, yeah luckily i can shoot my petawawa matches uh which is nice yeah. like, so it's kind of the reason why I run them because I want to shoot them too. So. Yeah, it'd well, be great to do that. They're they're fantastic shooters, so it'd be great to learn from them. What were you going to say, Ken? Yeah, and I was I was just going to add to that. I mean, in regards to uh, to those the, the two Canadian matches. I mean, obviously the U.S. has got matches going on mm-hmm. all over the place every weekend. And, uh, you know, it's lucky for us that, that we have now two matches in Canada, Meaford being one, uh, Rob Furlong's match being the other. Um, and uh, and Definitely people looking like people, we encourage people to come out and shoot, whether whether you're new or seasoned, but these are not uh, what I'd call a meatball match. Like these are serious, serious matches and, and they stack up to some of the best matches that are, that are run down in the U S. So if you can't travel to the U S or you can't afford to do the match in the U S, but you want to ha- to, to go shoot a legitimate match, uh, definitely these are two of the matches to be done. 
And, uh, you know, aside from that, you know, like you mentioned with uh, David Preston and, and Ken Sanofsky coming up, you know, obviously they're, they're some of the best shooters in, in, uh, in the country or in North America, along with a whole bunch of others. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we were lucky enough to be able last fall to have them do a little bit of a clinic that was more geared to, to more advanced stuff um, to, uh, to, to teach people with. I mean, myself and Ryan, we, we, we know what we, we, we know what we know and, and we've done what we've done over the years. We don't claim to know everything and we're learning every day, but we want to be able to offer, uh, uh, some, some top level, uh, instruction with some of the top guys in the, uh, in the, uh, in the PRS. And that's what we're able to offer. And if we get the chance to do it again this year, we definitely want to try and make that happen. Yeah. And there's some of the nicest guys in the world too. Absolutely. Yeah. Actually- yeah, and I actually I lucked out. I mean, had, heading down to, to uh, Dave's there at the beginning of April to do some training with him. So, uh, one on one, so it'd be great down there. Uh, the other thing I was going to mention too, like if you guys, if somebody uh, doesn't have the equipment to shoot a match yet, or they don't think they're ready to shoot a match, they can always RO these matches uh, just to see how they run and, and what to expect when they when they get out there to actually shoot. Uh, I know Kelly, you've come out the last two years and been fantastic having you on the yeah. path. There. And having you around as well so um it's fun yeah. it's one of my favorite things to do it really is yeah, yeah for sure just yell impact impact <laughs> yeah <laughs> do you guys yell impact i assume you do yeah we do okay good. yeah we do <laughs> <laughs> it yeah it's a really really good time so if you have the opportunity to volunteer ryan's going to be probably putting that out soon too right Present. yeah you're going to need some volunteers this year Okay. Yeah. Anything you guys that we didn't talk about? Uh, I'm going to hit Adriel and Trevor first before we go back to you guys. Do you guys have any questions that we didn't cover? No, I think oh. that was a, a good overview. I think like the, the course, uh, like I mentioned before, uh, good idea because a lot of new people yeah. uh, might not be successful if they just came out and shot a match. So, so for some people, they want to be as prepped as possible. And I think having a course mm-hmm. where they can go learn, get a little bit more comfortable with it uh, is a good idea because then They'll take that. They'll go to a match. They'll apply what they learned, and that's uh, that's fantastic. I really like yep. the idea where you guys had the that big match and then uh, training around that as well, because people will have it fresh in their heads that match, and to go from match to training or training to match, whatever it is, I think is is really good as well, because just adding those reps and that focused time to practice and apply what you learn is uh, is really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, Ken. Anything yes. that you want to, anybody you want to thank, anybody you want to plug, anything like that? Um, yeah, I mean, definitely, uh, definitely lots of people to thank. I mean, we've got a whole uh, slew of people that, uh, that, that support us. Uh, obviously, uh, Cadex Defense, uh, Vortex mm-hmm. Optics, um, Bullseye London. <laughs> with <a beat. laughs> um, can, we talk, the, can we talk, sorry to interrupt, but can we talk a little bit about Bullseye? Um, absolutely. You guys are moving soon, are you not? We are actually, um, okay. which has been, you know, uh, it's very exciting for us. It's been something that's been a uh, work in progress for the last couple of years. Um, so right now our tentative move date is May 1st. Okay. We will be moving to a brand new location, which actually isn't far from our current location. Um, it's going to be a 14,000 square foot facility, which is massive, uh, a lot bigger than what we've got now. Um, a good chunk of that is going to be, uh, or a fair chunk of that's going to be retail, uh, definitely uh, more than, uh, I think about double than what we have now. So we're looking at about 5,000 square feet in the retail space. The rest of it will be uh, back end warehouse shipping, uh, receiving, things like that. Um, so definitely looking forward to that. That's going to uh, help us uh, carry more inventory and better serve our customers. So definitely looking forward to that project. Awesome. And then uh, as well, coming a little bit later down the road is going to be the hope, uh, hopefully the uh, uh, building and completion of our range, which is going to be about uh, early fall is what we're forecasting. So Fantastic. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So was there anybody else you wanted to thank? I kind of yeah. interrupted you. No, that's okay. Uh, definitely, uh, definitely, like I said, uh, Kx Defense, Vortex Optics, a uh, Bullseye, um, Korth Group, Hornaday, uh, Hornaday uh, Bullets, uh, Benchmark Barrels, um, Gary Eakin from Bighorn Sales, uh, Dan at Ennett Case, um, Chew Brothers Precision. I mean, uh, all those guys have been supporting us over the years, and uh, we definitely couldn't couldn't do what we do not only from a uh, shooting and performance aspect of that but also you know getting support for uh, running these uh, clinics and matches and other stuff so the firearms community has been 
great, uh, especially in Canada with the being a little smaller than is U.S. But uh, we've been lucky to have a lot of people that we work with closely step up and help support not only us but the matches as well. So fantastic. Okay, and we'll end we'll end with you. How about that? What are, uh, do you have any uh, anybody that you want to thank, Ryan? Yeah, obviously, uh, pretty well everybody can, can cover there too. Uh, obviously, Bullseye has been a huge help for for myself, and it's a great store to go to. They always have, um, you know, all the all the products I'm needing, or mm-hmm. you know, Ken's always willing to get the stuff in if you need it as well. Um, I, I know that anybody that I ever send over to his shop is always really happy with the, the knowledge Ken can can bring to the precision end of it, and all, obviously the uh, handguns and everything else as well that he does. And, and the great service from all the guys there at the shop, too. Um, we're actually so impressed with all the work they've done. We're putting in a uh, constellation in their um, in their new shop there. So they're going to be uh, all of the KDX rifles are going to be on display at their shop. Nice. Uh, which will be great to have there. So and uh, obviously, uh, I also uh, shoot for uh, Swarovski and Collis. Um, so they're great optic that I've been I've been running for the last year. Um, actually a, a field tech for those guys. So um, if you're ever at the, you know at one of the ranges and you want to check out some some Swarovski scopes or uh, spotty scope or, or binoculars, you know, hit me up and we'll get you set up. So. Awesome. Okay. And where can they contact you both if they have questions or if they want to sign up for matches or what have you? Uh, Facebook is always a great way to hit me, to send me a, a direct message or um, they can always find me on there on my uh, Ryan McLean on Facebook, uh, or they can hit up the uh, Petawawa Club uh, Club Series uh, page as well. They can send me the message on there. Perfect, Ken. Yeah, and uh, for myself, you know, same thing. Uh, you can uh, usually find me on uh, any of the social media platforms there, and of course, uh, uh, at the uh, at the Bullseye Store at any time. Uh, you can just call in, you can talk to me, or uh, send me a quick email, Ken at BullseyeLondon dot com. Very easy to get a hold of me. So awesome! Thank you so much for both of you for coming on and Ryan uh, anytime that you want us to plug your matches, just let us know, send us the the information. We'll send it out to everybody. Perfect. Thanks. Appreciate that. All right. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks. See you later. See ya. All right. Thanks to Ryan and Ken for coming on and telling us a little bit more about PRS. Uh, listener feedback. Now you guys are hosting like watch parties on your own, right? So yes. Uh, are there any comments on there that we can't see? That would be interesting to talk about. <laughs> I've been. Uh, let me see. Oh, okay. Um, some of them as somebody... we go. Yeah. Somebody went. Okay. Uh, Marcel figured out that uh, these questions were obviously because I was planning my next build. So he was right during the main topic. Um, mm-mm. is it obvious that that's what we do? Like we invite people on and then we like pick yes. their brain about what we're going to do next. Like that, that's, that, that is what we're all, this is self-serving, right? Absolutely <laughs> self-serving. But if you're interested, that means other people will be interested. Yes. And yeah. quite honestly, I don't know if Trevor was all that interested, but then this, you know, Ken and Ryan started a talk and he's ooh like this and I've you tried know, I, to convince Trevor that 6.5 Creedmoor is a lot better than 308, but now we had the experts come on and say the same thing. I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everybody at Meaford was running was running a bolt gun, and it was uh, 6, 6.5 Creedmoor. So. Oh, <laughs> okay. So uh, Marcel brings up a very good point. Single malt scotch has less calories than um, uh, moonshine. Uh, Tim Mills, he yep, makes sir. his own liquor too and gave me some samples. Really nice stuff. He believes everyone should love moonshine. Filthy is reminding me um, <laughs> that I forgot to mention how his wife was able to outswear us all at the uh, Steel Challenge. Shout out to nice. Ella. Ella. Ella, I love this. All right, I got to bring this up. So, Filthy gets her a Ruger PCC. Yes. Then he gets her a tricked out 1022, or I don't know which one came first. Doesn't matter. Then he gets a Ronin chassis for his um, Glock 17. Mm, And then he takes her to the range with his PDW AR with the 22 conversion kit that doesn't run all that well on safety. She can't disengage and finishes the match with Ben's rifle. Awesome. She's shooting. That's fantastic. She's got like a whack of guns. Yeah. And he takes out the worst choice, and she has to finish the match with somebody else's gun. But she did it, and she did it like a boss with a whole lot of swearing 
and a lot of hitting right of in. the targets. It was amazing. She uh, she was a lot of fun to have out there with us. Uh, congratulations, Zilla. Yeah. That's awesome. And um, yep. All right. That's it on my, uh, my watch party. So there's a couple of people who are asking if uh, for the Ladies Day event that uh, is at USC, if you needed a pal, if the ladies need a pal. Nope. They do not need a pal. They don't need experience. They don't need anything. They just need to come. So just let that know and let them know that. And the other thing is, uh, Brad was asking about maple seeds. Maple seeds the schedules be coming out soon. We're going to have uh, the different uh, shoot bosses in the different areas try and set those up. So uh, he's in uh, uh, in the East Coast. So that'll be happening soon. So stay tuned. Once they're released, everybody will get noticed on that. So yep, yeah, that's it. Awesome. Sweet. Yeah. Let's on. Let's head on into listener feedback. Listener feedback is sponsored by DC Armory DC Gunsmith. Armory DC Gunsmith is a full service gunsmith who specializes in firearms refinishing. He offers hot bluing, parkerizing, and Cerakote finishes. I hear he's pretty good at that, as well as wood refinishing. Check out his online inventory of new and used guns, firearms, accessories, optics, and more at dcgunsmith.ca, and check him out on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, Trevor, did you want to take this first one from Ben? Sure. Just a few reminders of things you wanted me to email the show about so you didn't forget. This is Ben from the boys in Fredericton that we shoot with. First, True North Arms, you wanted to give a shout out to them and send along a pre-done letter, envelope, and sticker with the address of my local MP and even my return address. Okay, so... Ben is smarter than the way he writes. This is Ben. This is horrible grammar. So I'm just going to paraphrase because he's got it written really bad. If you place an order with True North Arms, Mm -hmm. when your order arrives, they have included a form letter, a self-addressed envelope to your MP. They find out where you live. They find out who your MP is, and they send you the letter and the self-addressed envelope. All you got to do is sign it and put it in the mail. That's what I'm going to be marking. True North Arms is going above and beyond yep. to help people be active. Now, Adriel, you said you got letters back already, right? You emailed the premier yep. or the prime minister and your MP? Yeah, mailed them both, and my my MP got back to me. Yeah. Mine did not. I'm and sure they are required to, are they not? They yeah, are. They are. Mm-hmm. I will follow up. Second, so who do you complain to when they don't when they don't get back to you? I don't know. Trudeau. It's got to be an official. I was going to say okay. the prime minister. Well. You, you got to like rate, go go up a level to Trudeau. Perfect. I will do that. I have a, I have a complaint about one of your staff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Second, the TCR twenty two. I know Adriel touched on it when you were when you weren't on the show, but I feel like it needed like it needs to be brought up again with more focus on just how good a deal it is for someone looking for a new semi auto twenty two. Also, Cabela's has had it in the past on sale for three hundred sixty nine dollars ninety nine cents with free shipping twice now, I think. So don't let the MSRP scare people away. There is a great comparison video on YouTube that shows the difference between the 1022 and yeah, the TCR22. Here's the link. I think those were the only two things you wanted me to email the show about. Thanks, Frugal, for a lot. So that's that's what. Remember, I was telling is you guys from, the whole. Is his name Ben for a lot? No, He's no, the no. The, 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 no. The group conversation has turned into the for a lot bunch to make fun of the Brady bunch, and everybody's got some ridiculous for a lot themed nickname. Oh, his name is Frugal? Frugal. Yeah, he's a cheap bastard, so somebody oh, okay. named him Frugal. Yeah. So the Thompson Center R22. Adriel, do you love it? I uh, have never seen one in IRL and uh, okay. haven't handled one yet. Did you say IRL one. without typing? Mm-hmm. Yes. That's uh, like, are you going to LOL instead of actually laughing out loud? No, like no. When, when you say LOL, you don't actually laugh out loud. You just go... <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's just your, you exhale through yeah. your nose. That's you no, don't actually laugh. But when That's you say IRL, F. it's a lot shorter than in real life. Yeah, <laughs> you need it to be short because you're typing, and typing is hard. But when speaking becomes hard, we just we need to like. <laughs> when is the meteor going to hit? Okay, I want I don't want the reset button hit. So TCR twenty two. Yeah, I think it's amazing the features that it has. Yeah, it's for a good the price. It 
it, it's the price of a stock bone stock crappy 1022. I haven't seen has one for these... this price. Like, where are you guys seeing them for 330? That was like, Cabela's. I yeah, see them for Cabela's 550. Says. Yeah, I know. I think for 330, I would have just bought one just bought for one. the for the sake of it. I kind of do 370. that. 370. 370. Yeah, I haven't it was seen on sale. Yeah. So we did the we actually did the review of it. So right now it's uh, 550 dollars at Cabela's. Who's we? We reviewed this. We talked, talked about, about it. it. Somebody oh, somebody okay. wrote in at somebody wrote in an email. And then we talked about it quite a bit, actually. Probably uh, Ben. <laughs> no, it wasn't Ben. No. But, All right, go back and so, listen to the past episodes, Ben. Yeah, and then we reviewed it quite a bit. And we the, didn't review oh, it if we didn't own it. Okay, we talked, talked about, about it. it. Mm-hmm. So, do you remember that face I had at the beginning of the program? Oh, your distressed uh, face? It's my pissed face. Oh, well, <laughs> use the correct terminology. I won't to have to correct you. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about it quite extensively how is that is that better extensively implies like an hour-long conversation so no it was I don't like think. 15 minutes all right so you chatted about it mm-hmm. yeah and, and what we and, imagined and Kelly, what do you think about it it's oh, a, it feels good I, in the hand. Yeah, it feels great in the hands. Yeah. <laughs> There's a classy. Uh, you, you should be a. You should be a YouTuber yeah, with reviews like, a, like yeah. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Amazing. <laughs> feels good. All right. In the hand. Move on to John. All right, from John. Uh, I was just listening to episode 342. Trevor's thinking about acquiring another GSG 1911. Funny story. I decided to sell mine this week, but haven't managed to list it on CGN yet. Let me know if I should bother to send pics he did. i am um, uh john from gunning around <laughs> yeah i asked john to send me pictures i thought i did but i don't remember getting them so um did he say in this email he sent pictures yeah he did no he Where said he let me know if i should send pics yes absolutely send did. pics john of the gun please <laughs> okay mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and if you go in and look at the email thread he sent pictures oh there are pictures in the email right <laughs> Fantastic. This is my correcting you now. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't think I. No, I don't think that qualifies as a correction. Oh, shut up! <laughs> Let's move on to Ginger Schnapps. Yeah, I go just, ahead, Kelly. So from oh, why do I get to read this? Because I'm the host. <laughs> <laughs> from Ginger Schnapps. Okay. Let's see if it's even readable. Uh, is our prime minister spending money like a 18 year old New Brunswicker boy that got his first paycheck from? a drilling rig and is headed to see his first stripper. Oh God. Lap dances for all, all the boys, a tray of shooter for, the, for those girls over there. And he can't figure out why he's in debt. No, nope, that's, guy, that's depth. So that's like, yeah, I, not I debt. fixed the it's spelling. Yeah. It's not departments. It's debt. Uh, is this guy a moron? Just a, a reminder, a pipeline seldomly leaks oil on the ground I'll never derail and take out a small town. James. True. Pipelines uh, don't do those things. Well, there's that Mexican video where they like, there's a That's gas That's a Mexican pipeline. pipeline. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. It's... Okay. So thanks. Yeah, you want to take James. that follow up as well? More ginger snaps. Let's play a game. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Um, out of the Slam Fire crew, uh, that's in a horror movie. Who's going to die? Uh, well, Everyone's going to die. Yeah, yeah, it's a horror movie. Uh, can no, I man, go first? Nobody survives. Yeah, no. go first, Kelly. <laughs> That's I mean. Can I go first? Can I die first? I think well, Trevor, you Trevor say... survives the longest because he's oh, in the middle think? of nowhere. If it's a zombie movie, there's like, how many people in your hometown, Trevor? Like 200? A dozen? I bet 200. you could take all of them out and then just like chill in the middle of nowhere. King of Camelton. How about <laughs> how about this? How about we pick which of our fellow co-hosts is going to die first and why? Kelly, you go first. Who's going to die first and why? Uh, Dave Cracky, because he's not here, and I pick him. <laughs> nice. And why though? And why? Because uh, no, I actually don't think so. I think I am because I am in the middle of a bigger city and uh it's a horror I more... movie it's a horror it could, movie right it could be you could be at camp crystal lake 
These were the parameters. It's horror pretty movie. old there. Hey, pretty old reference, movie. but it checks okay, out. Okay, James, you need to send in better definitions of what type of horror movie this is. If it's... I don't know. Wow. Trevor? Kelly. Take a shot at Trevor. It's going to be... <laughs> All right, it's going to be Kelly. I also think it's going to be Kelly, because Kelly is tries to make peace with everyone and everything and is indecisive. And you so the what? killer is just going to kill her. She'll be like, can we talk about this? Actually, I don't think it's going to be me first. Okay. Are you changing your answer? <laughs> That's maybe it. So, yeah. Because when people piss me off, they piss me off. And yeah, I go for blood. So, mm-hmm. all right. Uh, Adriel, my turn. Uh, Trevor, as soon as he goes up a slight incline, blow the <laughs> oh, <his> calf. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm with I'm with Adriel on that one. I gotta run in these movies. <laughs> this no, is it's true. always the slow person. I was, always, I was thinking it was more like a zombie movie, right? Mm. But it's a, it's a full fledged horror movie. Yeah, Trevor's gonna get it first because, yeah. He's lost a bunch uh, of weight though. He could probably run way faster now. True. Mm-hmm. True. True. Right. Mm-hmm. Terrible. Okay, Anyways. James, you're gonna write us in, write into us, and you're gonna tell us who you think's gonna die first, or in which order, and wh- how, and why, and what type of movie it is. This is like too broad. I need it narrowed down, funneled down, sum up. This is why you're dying first. <laughs> this is why you're dying first, right here. <laughs> Jesus, this is shut you up. <laughs> indecisiveness what kind of, i know you're a killer and this is the horror movie but tell me what kind of killer are you you know hey, it's james he's the Jesus one that Kelly. said a, a question i'm not listen freddie <laughs> <laughs> all right if you want to send uh, an email into the show and ask us how we're going to die uh, send your email to slamfire radio at gmail.com uh shout outs trevor uh yes my show is to Bill. High five, Bill. Cool. Kelly? Nope. Uh, I got a shout out to the guys who commented on the YouTube video and they're like, wait a minute. You forgot about that Norinko thing. So <laughs> now I got one. <laughs> so now I get to review that. Uh, Patreon supporters. We have a new Patreon. Uh, Mac Russell uh, is uh, donating. Is it is it 500 Fifty? Uh five dollars. Five dollars, but like what caliber is that? Is that fifty caliber? Is that five hundred? Fifty eight. Fifty eight. Fifty eight. I like I like fifty eight. Uh email the show in and we will send you a patch in the mail. If you haven't received your patch uh in a month, send us an email again or Facebook Adriel directly and just complain to him and uh and he'll get that out. Has anybody done that? Uh connected with me directly to complain? Yeah. Okay. No, not yet. Uh, I don't now that I've said on, on air, probably get all sorts of people. No. <laughs> uh, you can also you're support... my favorite. Mm. <laughs> I feel like you're, you're limited on selection here. Uh, you can also support the show by visiting our website and clicking on the links for Cabela's. Uh, join one of our National Firearms Associations, such as the CCFR. Check us out on Gunners of Canada and like us on Facebook. We're up to 2,351. Sweet. Yeah, yeah, we're getting up there. Getting up there. All right, good night, everyone. We're, we're closing in on them homeless kids. Good night. Closing in. So if you have any comments or questions for the show, please send an email to slamfireradio at gmail.com. Now go grab a gun and shoot something. When the talking is over, it's time to get a gun.